Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20. This episode, we weren't able to get everyone together to record, so Clay and I are just going to do kind of like a recap episode of the beginning of A Diamond Distinction to around episode 20 of A Deal with Demons. It's just you and me again, sitting in a room. In a dank, dark basement. Chains on the walls. Yeah. There are actual bars on our window. <laughs> there definitely are. <laughs> so we'll just get right to it. <laughs> <laughs> Brushed out under the rug. <laughs> I am not safe. <laughs> uh, so... We pretty much began a, a diamond distinction with everyone being in a Verancha as already. N- we didn't really specify any re- reason why everyone was there already. But basically, everyone got approached by one of the King's Guards to, and they kind of brought, or the King's Guard bribed everyone to come with him to talk to the King about something. And when you guys talked to the King, the King. Uh, report that you guys will be going on a kind of like an adventure so what he asked of you was to pretty much just escort the prince uh prince uh cochran to the city of stillsby which is about a two to three day trip and you would be accompanied by one of the king's best guards named kaka carl who is a air kokra so everyone accepted that, and everyone would be get a, getting a reward for that, which included a bag of holding, a bunch of gold, and I think uh, there were two golden rings that allowed the user to have an extra spell slot. As well, everyone got, or as well, one person got a quartz of teleportation, and Tony got that. Yeah, Tony. We all know how that went. Stupid head. <laughs> also, I kind of messed up playing into Baxi because like the first thing we did was blaze gets bribed to go talk to the king yeah to Baxi have no need for money <laughs> so it's like why did i take five gold but well, well. blaze is kind of always wanting money or like a reward of some kind so I kinda, it does make sense i did i guess so i and did go away from the whole to Baxi nature like not all because t- i personally love money yeah. not all to Baxi need to be like that i like, guess so yeah it's the exact same thing with any race or any class. You don't need it to be specific to one thing. Plus, I do need to pay for my books somehow. Yeah. All my books. You have to eventually get the full series of How to Make Crepes. We left that in the past. Or did we? <laughs> I hope we did, yeah. <laughs> it would be such a weird, like, ultimate goal <laughs> is to have all 12 volumes of How to Make a Crepe. There are 12 different ways. <laughs> no, um... I like that episode. It was one of the most awkward, like, first meetups for a yeah. group ever, though. <laughs> but, like, besides just having everyone meet in the bar, it's kind of hard to get everyone on the exact same level and exact same place and go into the exact same adventure. Yeah, exactly. You kind of have to do, like, the whole... If you're going to do it that way, it's like a converged yeah. path kind of thing. This way, at least... I mean, it was weird for everybody to just show up for five gold pieces, yeah. but, I mean, it worked out in the end. I don't know why we're all still together sometimes, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, like, after that initial meetup, you guys end up uh, going, or uh, taking Cochrane out of the town with Kaka Carl, and you guys ran into a few encounters. So, the first one was just, I think you saw a family of deep gnomes passing through the night. No. Uh, no, I just oh. shake my head because I hate them. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Deep gnomes are the worst. But yeah, those are the ones that told us they were running away. Yeah, uh, they uh, they were coming from Silsby and they had just been screwed over by Shavada. And now we're going to like a diamond mine to pretty much do slave labor. Oh yeah, speaking of Shavada, I solved your acronym puzzle. Where's yeah. my inspiration? Yeah, because I told you who it was. I told you who it was. He got he got the David Trapp, but he didn't know who he actually was. All right, I want yeah. half an inspiration then. No, that's some bullshit. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> the name David Traw is the name of the uh, lead singer from the Revivalists. I knew that, and I just thought it was fitting because he was his gr- uh, grandfather was one of the main people who created the re- Revivalists or revival spell. So I just thought it fit in that way, kind of like a pun. Anyway, so the next encounter after that 
I think everyone fought against some gnolls, and Kirk and Carl was kind of just surveying the fight to see how everyone was doing in the fight. That was so annoying. Yeah. Stupid bird, man. Like, what? He just wanted to test you guys to make sure that you guys could hold your own if something happened to him. And you guys did, so... We held guys, our own. Yeah. yeah. If he had taken part, some things may have gone differently. But yeah. yeah. Then after that, you guys ran into a bunch of teenage travelers. One was a, ken- a bloodstained Kenku named Kyle, often nicknamed Kill Bill Kyle. Then you guys also met a male tabaxi named Will to Live, and a female human named Sora. Uh, wasn't it Will to Survive? Yeah, I said Will to Survive. I thought you said Live. Oh, maybe. I, I might have. But it's yeah, the- it was Will to Survive. I am the tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. Don't spoil that. Is that an inspiration too? No. It's a negative inspiration. Oh, what? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, I owe you an inspiration now? Okay, I'll, I'll think of something. Poor Kenku. Killable Kyle. Living a rough life. I love that he showed up and just like, this is the nicest guy. And yeah. then I think, didn't he like almost die as soon as he left us? Yeah, uh, yeah, because eventually Tony's character died, and uh, he was able to see what was happening to him on Snitch. I think it was the television network. Snitch from uh, above. I forgot. And he about saw that, that Kill Bill Kyle was really bloodied again, and was like in a pit or something with a bunch of nails or something around. Yeah, or spikes. I love how Kyle came back as like the fucking vision now yeah. okay <laughs> there's there's he is important to the entire story how is this random like death cursed kenku important it blows my mind e- eventually you sh- you will ho- most likely learn i don't know there is a relation between him um the uh artemis and farron i'll just say that as of right now that's such a weird trifecta. Exactly. Like, what? Yeah. Artemis, Farron, and a random Kenku with a death curse. Yeah. That's so fucked up, man. I'm excited to see how that works yeah. out. And then after that, they met against they met a group of evildoers that was a an assassin and I think six cultists. Yeah, and that's and assassin. the assassin ended up Fuck murdering Cochran. Cochran. <laughs> Messed him up. <laughs> I, who was it that was like freak? I think it was Duncan was like freaking out. He was like, yeah. "Oh my god! Oh my god! He's rolling dice. Why is Gage rolling so much <laughs> dice on a fucking twelve year old?" Yeah. Oh well, Cochran didn't make it. Yeah. So then they went as fast as they could to the city of uh, Silsby in order to get him revived. So they passed by a couple people on the way, just an. A couple Eldrin, or an Eldrin and another elf. Deep gnome. They didn't talk to them at all. They just quickly passed by. We were in a rush, all yeah. right? I defend that choice. <laughs> then they saw a deep gnome uh, merchant in like a traveling cart and they you just swept right by never them. said he was a merchant. You just said another deep gnome. No, I did say that he was a merchant. No way. Yeah, because Tony was wanting to jump off the cart to talk to him to see if he just had anything. Just because he was a deep gnome. Okay. No. It definitely was a merchant, and I'm pretty sure I said that. Absolute horseshit. I defend that choice to ignore that dude. We were in a rush. Yeah. There's a dead... Ch- He's bleeding all over my cart. We had to do something. Yeah. Stupid kid. So the Deep Gnome did actually have enough diamonds in order to revive Cochrane, oh. but everyone skipped over him, so nothing <laughs> happened with him. Did, was that, like, originally planned? Was yeah. It, did you expect us to stop then? Yeah. What? Oh, my God. How did we fucking mess that up? <laughs> We had a lot of gold on us, though, anyway. Yeah, you we did. We had close enough. Yeah. And then we had to... Just, I think we just went and spent it all on a diamond, so... Yeah, pretty much. So you guys went to the city of uh, Silsby, found Isadora, the re- resurrection woman. But you found out that uh, if you bought the diamonds with just that, it probably wouldn't be enough. Just because of exchange rates, and Travis Dawes, the one who creates the exchange rates. Exchange rates. Only you would throw stocks at us. <laughs> Well, it's the reason why it's called a diamond distinction. I guess so, yeah. I wasn't ready for that, though. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, I guess we're going to Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, eventually, you guys did go to the exchange. You guys talked to Shravada. You guys got diamonds exchanged. It wasn't enough. So, when you went back to Isadora, she told you it wasn't enough. So, then you had to try to find some way to get that money. 
for the diamonds. So I think you had talked to Shravadaw about some things he could do, but both of them were kind of on the evil side. So one was to kill one of the city's top guards. The other was to kidnap someone who was an employee of him. I think you guys told him to just, well, uh, leave town and disappear. The dude we were supposed to kidnap? Yeah. Isn't he the dude we... We rescued and, like, escorted through the tunnels and, like, jumped off a cliff with him? Uh, that was someone else. Oh, that was someone else? I think. What did we do to get that money then? Because I don't remember the... Yeah, so... That was forever ago. You guys then ta- uh, went to find some other side quests around town. So one was a dwarven couple had lost their son. And they believe it could have been da- something about Shavadaw. I'm not sure if you actually found the son or not and returned it. You may have. I don't remember finding a kid. So I don't think that was... What were the other options? The one. Uh, Help a good cause and get a reward. So that's what the notice said. So it was to meet at an abandoned bakery. And you found a shady looking tiefling. I don't think that's the one we did. And they were trying to end some atrocities that were occurring in the black market uh, to try to help free some people who were being traded in the slave trade. So you guys learned about the slave trade there. You guys didn't... I don't think you guys actually did anything about the slave trade. And then <laughs> we were, we were protection a busy. <laughs> was a halfling family had drawn Trevdaw and was needed help getting out of the city safely. This one you definitely did. This is the last one you did. We did that before we left. Like it was after yeah. we resurrected and everything. Yeah. Right? It was it must have been the kid then. We must save the kid. Yeah, you might have. I don't remember doing it. Yeah. I don't think Blaze was very motivated. It was yeah. probably the one we did though, because Ryan yeah. was like super kid friendly. That's what I'm thinking. So the weird trope that has no explanation and <laughs> In his backstory, there's explanation. He just uh, hasn't like talked about it yet. Oh man, I guess we I guess we better do some serious role playing. <laughs> It'll be fun. Uh, yeah. So you, I think you guys saved the kid, and then you help. Then you had enough money to go get, back, go back for more diamonds. And I pulled my Sherlock Holmes trick off. Oh yeah, you stole people's hats and clothes. I think I Robert Downey Jr. that. Yeah, one. I I loved that. I thought that was yeah. so cool. I was sad when I fucked it up the first time. <laughs> yeah, befriended a Goliath or something. Yeah, so there's a Goliath in the line in front of you for diamonds, and uh, somehow you got to befriend him because he, because I tried to pass him. Cunt line, yeah. and I charmed my way out of it because he got super mad. Yeah. But everything ended up working out. You got the diamonds, you revived Cochran, and you brought Cochran to the uh, Lord of Silsby. Dick. Who is a dick. <laughs> and you got something from him, I think. I think you got like a hundred gold pieces or something from him. That's and then we also got the Rocky Talkies. You got that later on. Was that later on? Yeah, because he okay. got the Rocky Talkies from the King of Avranches. Right. Well, we got... Yeah, we did get something. Yeah. I think it was mostly just money. Because... Uh, wait. Uh, oh, so when he did the protect... Uh, when he protected the family and got them out of the city, I think you guys got 50 gold pieces worth of diamonds... And the monocle of Lewinsky, which I totally forgot about. I have monocle of Lewinsky in yeah. my things. I kept that. I'm the one who got the bag of holding, too. Yeah. Oh, we haven't got to that part yet. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, t- I kept the monocle of Lewinsky. I haven't even had a chance to use it yet. We haven't really done much society stuff. We've been in the wild or the depths. Like, I guess, yeah. The fucking thing, so. Well, you guys are in, I- in Ait now. You guys are in... You guys went back to Sillsby, I think. It- um, Were we... Yeah. We came back and did the the war thing with um Yeah. The human freedom fighter. Yeah, so there probably was some time, but I one hundred percent forgot about that until this moment now. <laughs> oh you did yeah, no, I keep seeing it in my thing, I'm like, forget yeah. what that does. I'll look that up. It's yeah. like a plus two or three to when fooling nobles. Yeah. 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 So we haven't really talked to many nobles. Like, oh, that could have come in so much handy with that king dude. Yeah. Oh, no, instead I just roasted him, but yeah. <laughs> Fuck that guy. So then you guys uh, went on your way back to Avranches to get your reward from the Lord of Avranches. 
And he gave you, again, like I said, the courts of teleportation. Tony got that. A lot of money, bag we of holding. Yeah, I took the bag of holding. And I think two rings that gave an extra spell slot. He gave one of those to Ryan and one of those to um, Farron. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because there are magic users. Yeah. I think Zach took most of the money. I think yeah. we split it up that way, though. I think Zach took most of the money. Mm-hmm. I took the bag of holding. Those two got rings, and then Tony got the quartz crystal. Yeah. Yeah, so we gave Zach, like, a bigger portion of cash. Yeah. I think that... Or all of it. I can't quite remember. Because I've, I've I've been broke yeah. for a while. <laughs> like, yeah. I have no money. Yeah. Except now, I think I got because of uh, Chun gave us money. And then I also yeah. sold some stuff to the merchant dude. I don't know. I can't remember exactly how I got it, but I got some decent cash now. Yeah. I don't know what to spend it on. Probably more daggers. Well, I mean, there's always a chance that the guy with who brews the Lonely Luck, Lucky Loan Brew will come around, or the Mithr, Mithr's. Mr. Mithers Mystical Mythics. Or I think I said that one right. Evil brother. Yeah. Who we must kill and take all his stuff. Mr. Mithr doesn't want to kill Mr. Misters. I know. He just Blaze, him. Blaze doesn't want to kill him. Yeah. I want to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it comes to that. Because then taking the stuff will be way easier. <laughs> uh, so basically, after you completed, after you got your reward from the Lord of Avranches, that is the end of a diamond distinction. Yeah. And we went on a boat trip. Yeah. So then, when you, after talking to the Lord of Avranches, he asked you guys to complete another task for him. You need us to go to Summersdale? Yeah, to check to see if everything was alright there, because he had sent a lot of lots of ravens there, but no one had responded or anything like that. I think we joked we're like selling off another child. <laughs> yeah, I think you said something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Fuck. Apparently, our group just fucks with kings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you, you guys said, yeah, sure, and there were some rewards for doing that. I can't remember exactly right right now what we never the rewards were. Got the rewards because that's when everything went shit. Yeah. So we never actually cashed in. I don't think. Yeah, I I think one reward was like a headquarters in Avranches. I think. Yeah, but yeah, like like but we that's said, that's never there's... been able to happen yet. Yeah, because everything went to shite. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. At the end of Deal with Demons, we will have a headquarters in Avranches. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> We'll give it a cool name. We'll put all our pets in there. We'll hire some kitchen staff. We'll call it Blaze's Sanctuary. <laughs> but yeah, then we did the boat trip, which yeah. is probably my favorite part of the campaign so far. Okay. It was a little naval. I love naval stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I thought guess, it was yeah. so cool. That's yeah. when I found the, nar- the marbles, the mystery of like the ship. Yeah. Uh, it, no one knew what was going on. Farron started acting super paranoid, mm-hmm. which was the beginning of my de- descent into mistrust and hate. <laughs> I don't like Farron anymore. Uh, <laughs> that guy has like exasperated all his second chances. So I don't think I actually gave him a second chance. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. You've given him lots of chances. I think like yeah. after the first chance, you didn't trust him at all, but you didn't really do anything specifically about it yeah well now i'm just calling him out every five seconds yeah (laughs) Yeah, i'm done with that guy but no i thought it was cool the whole boat mystery everyone's going missing summersdale was super cool that's where we found lovecraft Mm -hmm. the ultimate partner so let's just talk a little bit more about the naval stuff and then we'll get to summersdale yeah so you guys ran into a bunch of different trips all of them had no one on those trips anymore and they seem to just have been abandoned at random. Yeah. You found uh, one of them had what seemed to be like a child's diary in it. That That's creepy. was kind of creepy the way it was written. Uh, then you found some bad thieves and stuff like that. You also found a drunken witch's uh, like boathouse where you found a drunkard's hat and a bag of mystical marbles, which... Haven't really been used besides one time. Is that the canon name now? Bag of Mystical Marbles? Because I dig that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to steal those from Tony if he doesn't put them to fucking use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he 
He's been hor- he's he's scared. He's, uh, t- Tony's the kind of guy who doesn't want to use it because he's like, once it's gone, it's gone. Like, yeah. How am I gonna marble the bad guy now? He's saving it for Artemis. Yeah, I think oh, he, definitely. We joked about it, but I think he really is tempted to just throw every single marble yeah. at once. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna nick those off him. I want I want a couple. They look fun. I want to yeah. play with one. Oh, uh, we did use three. I think so far. We used the one on me. Maybe go blind. Yeah. Which we did on the ship as soon as we oh, got four them. four of them, actually, because there was two on the ship when we first got them. Mm-hmm. So one was thrown at the ship itself. It was supposed to make whatever it was thrown at fall in love with the, the thrower. That's right, but it was... So like, nothing poof, happened. A smoke, we were so yeah. confused. And then you threw... Then the uh, second one was the one he threw at you, and you became blind from that. <laughs> For a while, that freaked me out. Yeah. <laughs> and then he threw one at, uh, uh, at the deaf one at Artemis. Bad luck. Bad, bad. Luck. Wait, which one did he throw? At Made him deaf. I oh yeah, remember, yeah. Because right. he was like yeah. confused for a moment, and then Tony yeah. was like, "Uh oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not what I wanted the marble to do." Yeah, but I think it was cool. You told us it was like a twenty-five percent chance or something, or fifteen or five, like yeah, really there low. There was chance. around. Uh, I think it was like a fifteen percent chance that you could have just flat out killed Artemis, Artemis at that point. Dude, that would have the show would have been over by now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been sad. And I have no idea what I would do if that actually happened. <laughs> Angrily turn off the computer and be like, we're done for the yeah. day and just leave. <laughs> That's what I would do. I'd be like, God damn it. Never should have given you those marbles. And plus it, it was planned for Tony's character to become a revenant. So if he killed the main bad guy, I'd have no one to have him be a re- revenant, revenant for. Aaron, though, you suddenly find out you have cancer, and you're going <laughs> to die in 27 seconds. <laughs> there you go, Revenant. Um, sorry, back to the boats, though. Yeah. It made me, made me blind, and then cultists. Boat. Yeah, you fought some cultists, too. Those guys are pushovers. Yeah. That's when Sebastian threw the fog cloud at us. <laughs> made everyone's life difficult. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that was, And then didn't we just cancel that with Gust of Wind anyway? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Seb, man. Yeah, that was back when we when he didn't actually tell any of us he was a wild magic sorcerer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like no one even noticed that he was doing wild rolls. Which we will fix. <laughs> yeah, I, I will remember this next time that he has wild magic. I'll remember every single time for the next five like ten times he uses magic, because we're on an episode like forty three right now and he still hasn't had to roll anything. I just give him disadvantage <laughs> on all his rolls for like the next forty episodes. <laughs> Uh, I look forward to that. I can't wait for something stupid to happen. I'm, yeah, it's time Farron got to, got his karma. Damn it! <laughs> well, I mean, he's already had lo- lots of karma from like when he's disappeared and stuff has happened to him. I but you guys don't really know too much about that stuff. So. No, he just told us he. I disappeared. Woke up in a cave. I climbed the wall. Yeah. Went into the cave. Explored the cave. Left the cave. Met this dude. Set it by a dragon. And then you guys showed up. Yeah, pretty much. What an adventure. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, you guys made it to Summer Sale and you found that no one at all was there. That was freaky deaky. Like, super quiet, super eerie. The only living thing you saw in the town was a couple of wolves, including Lovecraft. Lovecraft, who we forced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves us unconditionally now. But back then, I don't think he was totally comfortable with the trust falls. The tea, I think he enjoyed. <laughs> we poured him tea. We sat at a... I don't know where we got the tea. Yeah. <laughs> I think we just kind of like fucking made that shit up. Yeah. yeah. Tea and crumpets, sir. And then, yeah, trust falls. I just laugh. I want I want to draw that so bad. Like, his <laughs> eyes, huge, like, little pupils, and his heat is falling backwards, mm-hmm. paws flailing, and then just, just blaze, like, ready to catch him. Yeah. Also, I don't know why I made my cat, man. Love that dog so much. It's, it's a weird, oh, yeah. it's a yeah. weird duo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Fuck it. <laughs> cats will be cats. Yeah. But Summersdale completely empty. Is that when Farron attacked Arundel, or was that? Yeah. So, uh, Arundel was gonna steal some, or no, uh, Farron was gonna steal some shit from one of the shops there. And Aelrindal wanted him to pay for it, and they got into an argument, and then Farron cast some kind of spell. I can't remember what it was on him. It was a teleporting spell, was it not? I don't think so. 
I can't remember because it, it hurt Tony. And then Farron made his way out. Yeah. But he left the necklace or something, didn't he? He didn't actually take the item. No, he did grab oh, he it. He did take it. Yeah. That's, son of That's a something bitch. he's like barely ever used again. What was it? It was a necklace that helps with identifying arcana things and just, yeah, just arcana stuff. Oh, okay, cool. Which, oh, yeah, it gives him advantage on investigation checks or arcana checks, sorry. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I remember him and Tony had their little squabble. I keep calling him Tony. Arundel and Farron had their squabble. Uh, and that's when I started thinking that that guy has serious, like, split personality disorder. Yeah. Because he was being real weird about it. I don't oh, know. yeah, definitely. Was, like, he had, like, a mini breakdown in there. Yeah. It's messed up. Yeah, and, like, when he returned to the rest of the group, he just, like, slouched down and fell asleep because it exhausted him so much. <sighs> uh, So you guys, like, explored the city a little bit more. You found some books, I think. And then you explored some of the shops, and you saw a few... Words that you now realize what they are about. So, like, uh, I don't know who they are, but they are here. Please save us. Then you also saw, saw one that was, I've sent my son away. His name is Aaron Sonsol. If anyone reads this, please help him out. He'll be in the forest. I fear I won't see him again. May I let the Ander guide you? You guys didn't care about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we even, like, questioned the idea yeah. of going there. We just ignored that note. But that would have been... This is probably something really cool that we missed out on. Ah, uh, he was just a kid. Oh. Uh, yeah, how did we not do that? Ryan should have been yeah, I know. that. Yeah. What the hell? Duncan? Uh, well, I think that someone else saw it, but didn't tell Duncan about it, because they'd know that Ryan would want to do that immediately. You need a roleplay better, Duncan. <laughs> no, I don't blame him. And then you also saw someone on the uh, store for Lucky Lone Brew away on a camping trip. Please come back in one week. Lucky him. That was a well-timed camping trip. Yeah. And then you also saw in one house another uh, it, another two words were written on the wall in dark red, almost blood-looking writing. And it was the Shardana. Yeah. That was freaky. Yeah. So from there, you guys end up leaving Somersdale to go back to Avranches to talk to the cane about what happened. And again, you saw a lot, a lot of abandoned ships on the way. Then what, at one point, you, when you were closer to Avranches, you saw three huge ships larger than you ever saw closing in on the city, seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah, that was sick imagery. I remember that. That was super cool. Because you were talking about how they like, just suddenly, like, you blink and they're just there. Yeah. And then, like, we're this tiny ship, like, just off the side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we forgot to talk about our captain the whole time. The, oh, yeah. The uh, gnome, right? What is her name? Uh, I can't remember her name. All I remember is that she had 17 different, like, voices. Yeah. And <laughs> she didn't really like us in the end, I think. She no, kinda... she, she enjoyed it, you guys. Yeah. I should bring her back. No. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure she'll come up at some point i can't remember her name up yeah name, i can't but. either but no i i do remember that though that was really cool and there was like nothing we could do but no tony had to do something <laughs> yeah you guys ended up using gust of wind and your fist, wind, of, unbroken yeah, fist of unbroken air which too. is way more op like i should use it more yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i don't yeah so you guys use that to go super fast towards the city and then at one point, Tony is his teleportation stone to go to the city itself, where you guys finally saw Shardana actually on land there. And they, he was about to kill the King of Vranches, and Tony just popped in there and tried to throw a marble at uh, Artemis, mm -hmm. just deafened him, and then Artemis killed both the King of Vranches and... Uh, Il Rendell. Il Rendell. Yeah, he took Alan down like, what, one round of combat? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that was fucked. Yeah. You guys were only like level four Two, at the time. Because you guys started out at level three and then level four when you guys completed uh, the first quest. No, because we're level five now. And like we leveled up once before that. I remember, I think when we were in the depths, you leveled us up. Yeah, after the depths, you guys leveled up. Two. 
I I think we're level three at this point. I think. Maybe. Because I remember you leveled us up to four, and I got excited because I did like ability stuff. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I got really excited. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, because no chance. Like I knew immediately that might like part of me suspected that either Tony's as dumb as I thought he was, yeah. right? <laughs> or that's super scripted. Yeah. yeah, it it definitely was scripted. Like Did Tony you, and I had talked about this. Was the king supposed to be killed too? Then there's always a chance. Oh, he could have got away. Yeah. How could he? Like just like it all depended on how that fight between him and Artemis had went. Right. Well, the fact is that he died, and he cost us like an extra hundred. <laughs> 100, 100 gold there. Yeah. Jerk. Stupid king. So then, after the king died and after Elendil died, um, the Fardar rounded everyone up in the city and put them through these teleportation circles, and then no one was left, left in the city. I got serious Doctor Strange like vibes when you're talking about. I, didn't, I never yeah. thought like teleportation circles like on the ground. But I thought of, like, those whirling little circle portals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I, like, wanted it to be like. Yeah. All right, Chardana, a symbol. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that was pretty sick scene. I was very mad when it went down, because at first I thought Tony was just getting himself killed, because he thought, oh, here's the boss fight, time to do it, guys. Uh, but, no, like, when he went out in, like, one hit, I knew something was up. Like, yeah. I was like, there's no way Tony... No. <laughs> that is one of my favorite scenes because when everything was happening, well, when Tony and Artemis were fighting, everyone went silent. And yeah. they were like, wanted to know what happened next. Or at least it seemed like it. So well, I was super excited. That it got really intense. We were all yelling at each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then as soon as he did it, it was. I think Duncan was super mad because he wouldn't let his spell take hold. <laughs> Poor, that's like when Duncan was really struggling with being a spellcaster. Oh, yeah. He, nothing yeah. he was doing was working. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, he was super upset when the whole person didn't work. Yeah. And he was like, damn it, Gage. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> well, the thing was that Tony had said he was going to do that before yeah. Duncan yeah, wanted yeah. to hold person, so I couldn't really allow that. No, it, was, it, it makes sense. Even if, like, it wasn't scripted, I feel like. Tony would have been gone anyway. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, bad luck for Duncan. Made him feel inferior, which he is. <laughs> no one is up to my level. Uh, but, you know, yeah, Tony died. We had some fun in Abandoned of Ranches. Made yeah. out like bandits. <laughs> we even, like, raided the king's castle <laughs> while that. carrying his dead body around <laughs> yeah. and stuff. That was so good, man. <laughs> Found the chest room. Yeah, the chest room, which is just a room with a bunch of chests with nothing in them. Yeah, that was obnoxious. Yeah. Like, wait, what the hell? <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, we're going to get something cool. Here we go. Gage didn't want us to come here, but we went anyway. Like, part of that, I did plan, but I also didn't want you guys to be super OP at level 3 or 4, or whatever you guys were at. Yeah, and that's when we stole a bunch of gold, gold, little yeah. gold instead. Yeah. Yeah, we somehow got in. I think it was because we had a really lucky roll. I think Zach had a yeah. really good role picking the lock. We don't even have a rogue, do we? No. Yeah, Zach is as close to a rogue as we're going to get. And so, he's, a, he's a ranger. I know, yeah. but that's like as close as a rogue we're going to get, I yeah. think. Like, someone's got to get thieves tools. I need more money. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun raiding the castle. That was cool. Walk around. I got to King's room, stole his hat. Yeah, no, multiple hats of his, I Multiple think. of his hats. Because he got one that is, like, the hat with the twirly windmill on top. Yeah, I thought that was sick. And then there was a hat, uh... Was it, like, one of the, the beer hats he got? Or... I don't know. I think I did. I forgot I had yeah. that. That's in my bag of holding. Yeah, so, like, one of the hats that has the straws through the brim that he can just slip beer from. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe they gave me the bag of holding. <laughs> I was so ready to take it. I was like yeah. all over that. I pounced on that. I was like, please. I want it so bad. I want to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hoard all the cool stuff. Um, but then we also, that's when Duncan got his mithril armor. Yeah. Well, what does mithril armor do? Like, I, I thought it was like super powerful armor, but like it hasn't really increased his AC at all. Uh, Yeah. So it, it's the same AC as plate. Plate armor. Plate. Yeah. I think plate, but it. Doesn't give you disadvantage on stealth checks. Oh, that. Oh, that's right. He said that, hasn't he? Yep. Okay. Cool. 
And it glows. Glows blue. Does it? It does in the Dungeon Master's Guide. I think it says it oh, has a faint glow. That. Cool. Well, we decided that because when we were doing art, um, he made it blue. Oh, okay, Mithron, sweet. Made it blue. Okay. I just immediately thought it would glow blue because I thought of uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And that Mithra armor is like white, but had like a glow to yeah. it. So I just, just, I don't know. I thought blue, glowing blue armor is just sick. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want blue glowing armor? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't because I'm a monk, but <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's my next thing. I got to get a cool cloak. <laughs> that's that's a monk thing. I got to get a sweet yeah. cloak. I was thinking cloak of flaying. <laughs> I think it would look sh- not too shabby. Cloak of flame? Flaying. Flaying. Yeah, so, it, it's not good. You don't want to oh, wear okay. it. It okay. hurts you. It pierces your skin. And Yeah, that was that was a joke you were supposed to get, Gage. Well, I, I honestly don't know m- many of the magic uh, items in the DM's guide. I read the DM's guide like a fucking school yeah. book. Like, most of the stuff that I have for magic items, I either made up with or stole from Reddit or <laughs> other places like that. No, I I can't I can't judge because I steal stuff from like other D and D shows and yeah. from like DMG. So, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's called it's not stealing. It's inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which you won't give me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so raided the castle, got mithril armor, threw Tony through a window. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was enough branches. Yeah, that's that right. wasn't yeah. branches. I yeah. threw his dead body through a glass window. Yeah, we had to get in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. None of us knew how to pick locks that well. Yeah, and I think there were a couple Shardana outside of the city that you guys interrogated. Did I we? Ta- oh yeah, we did talk to them, didn't we? And that's how we knew we had to go to the depths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think you found out about the depths and. That there were that they're the Shardana and that their leader is Artemis. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. And then that's all they would l- let you know. So you guys killed them after. Yeah, we fought them anyway. Oh, that's right, because there were a bunch, and then we heard a giant explosion as we were leaving the king's castle because someone made a noise or a boom. So we ran there because someone used thunder wave. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thunder wave yeah. or something. Yeah, because that's the fight where uh, Lazarus. Uh, Threw both swords at a Shardana and then, and then jumped and kicked the swords more into their bodies. Zach gets off on combat. That's yeah. his thing. He was so ex- I know he was <laughs> excited. Yeah. Quiet guy, but he was like, yeah. <laughs> I did shove two swords at that man's chest with my feet. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no, we've had we've had we've had some good combat. Yeah. Some things have gone well. Like uh I'm jumping ahead again, but like when Duncan jumped off the ladder, that was sick. Oh yeah, or the Barlgura fight. Yeah, the human uh, <laughs> machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we found out the Shardana in the depths, and then why we decided to go to Stillsby. Yeah, so you could revive both Aelendil and the King of Avranches. Right. So we talked to the gnome girl again to give us a ride. Yeah. She was not okay though. She was pretty freaked out. I remember. Yeah. And all while this is, well, then you guys went to Stillsby, and while that was happening, you got, uh, Aelrindal was in the afterlife and just watching everything happening going on on Snitch. Yeah, and he met an all being, all powerful being or something. Yeah. That was mysteriously unhelpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I am powerful, but I can't do anything right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can't really affect the human world much no not too much but that's when he met the witch too right yeah he met the witch who created the marbles but and she conveniently was still worshipped. drunk and now had no idea what they were yeah it conveniently worshipped the same god as yeah. the rest of us and he didn't see his parents there it was sad well his parents I don't think are dead oh, oh. or his, his father might be I'm not sure so his grandparents but didn't actually go talk to them yeah that was weird i thought he would definitely yeah. go talk to them oh well it might be something he just forgot about at the moment oh, oh boy. he was pretty hype on getting to watch snitch though yeah <laughs> that's how he found about found out about kill Bill kyle almost dying again 
Yeah, exactly. And he saw us mess with his dead body. And yeah. Luckily, he forgot all that. Yeah. Except Duncan <laughs> was not even in character. He just wanted to screw me over. I yeah. know what that was about. Yeah. That little shit. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm sticking in my guns to that one. We had to get in that door, okay? There was only one option, and that was to throw a corpse through a window. <laughs> what else were we going to do? There's a lot you could have done. To... I don't know what you're talking about. There's yeah, nothing sure. else. That was the only yeah, you know what? You're right, I think. <laughs> Listen, Bla- Blaze is a changed man cat. <laughs> a changed man cat. <laughs> uh, so after you guys were there, you guys got to still be unharmed. You got uh, both the king and Elendral revived. Yeah, Aaron, though, came back to life on the ship, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he came back to life on the ship because Scared he the became shit a revenant. Just crawled out there yeah. like a... I thought you were going to end the episode there. When he, like, popped the bottles, cork out with his teeth, and then took a swig and said, we go to mall. I thought that was like, boom, end of episode right yeah. there. I was like, that would have been sick. But, yeah, uh, but I, then we I just, probably should have. Yeah. No, nah, that's all good, though, because like, then we had, like, the quick interaction with each yeah. other afterwards. He scared the shit out of Blaze. <laughs> you know, normally dead bodies don't get back up, but... Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I feel like we were a little too cool with him being a Revenant. Like, we kind of brushed <laughs> that real quick. We were like, yo, what's up, man? He was like, I'm a Revenant. And we're like, okay, sweet. <laughs> well, I mean, Farron was really not into it for quite a while, I think. Yeah, it's like... After a while, it's like when you wear a bracelet. You feel it. Yeah. For a little while, and then after a while, you don't even know it's there half the time. Yeah. And that's a revenant. We don't even know. <laughs> He's a corpse. He's a walking corpse. We just don't really. It's like, eh. Yeah. I made, honestly, I should get a thank you note, because throwing him to that glass made him look cooler. He's like super, <laughs> all these scars. Looks like he had a super badass death and not a, hey, whoosh, boink with the marble and then get one shot. Yeah. I think, you know what? You're welcome, Tony. You're welcome. I, I made you look cool. I kind of want Tony to do Joker style. People will ask him why he looks so weird. And it's like the Dark Knight. Like, you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> My father was a drunk. <laughs> Just a bunch of random backstory. Yeah. He won't, though. No, he probably won't. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> like, may- maybe when we actually learn why everyone was in a to begin with, maybe then some more stuff like that could be talked about. But I don't see... Him saying anything like that for a while. Or like talking about scars or anything. I don't know. Just because he looks weird. Yeah. We've, we've, we've acknowledged that a little bit. That he's like kind of like a grayish dying looking creature yeah. covered in scars from glass. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it, we don't really talk to people in the cities. Like we kind of keep to ourselves. We talk to so important much. people who like don't really have time to care. The fact that... You know, I'm an abyssal yeah. wretch, or that he's undead. They're like, like uh, the dude in um, Stillsby. Six, six. Yes, he's like, yeah, not important right now. Revolution. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's fair. Thank you. Yeah. Mary. And well, like Ryan makes makes sure he talks to every blacksmith in the city. So I, he's the only one, one thing, really, yeah. though, that like goes out of his way to talk to people. Yeah. The rest of us are playing antisocial characters <laughs> when much. I think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blaze doesn't waste his time with people. Lazarus is like a ranger from the woods. He doesn't have, he doesn't want to talk to people. Yeah. And, um, well, Tony's a revenant with a one-track mind, and Farron is a sorcerer that definitely doesn't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, poor Ryan. We're dragging him down, man. <laughs> we never give him time to talk to people. Yeah, so, as you were saying, you guys did uh, talk to Zix in uh, Stillsby, and he told you about the revolution going on. So you decided to stay on his side, because he did know that the lord of Avrancha, I mean, of Stillsby, was, was a douche. Yeah, because I remember him being super dickish after we talked to him again, because we talked to him first, didn't we? Yeah. And then he talked, we talked mad shit to him. Yeah. Was that... The second time we came, or was that after we dropped off Cochrane? You talked some shit to him and he dropped off Cochrane, but I think you talked to him again before the revolution. I can't remember why we were talking to him, though. Oh, yeah, you were ta- talking the about, about the Fardana. 
We did, yeah, and we yeah. dropped off King of Avranches. Yeah. After we got him revived. Yeah. Which were that lady's best, like, top selling customers. Oh, yeah, now. definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to go there twice in, like, a week, she must be like, okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah like, she's living like a queen now. Yeah. Just for me, guys. <laughs> yeah. She has a new Tesla. Yeah, she didn't use those diamonds for anything. She's a liar. <laughs> she's a con artist. A true con artist. She's got scrolls <laughs> up her sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, and then we talked mad shit to the king of Stillsby, the yeah. lord of Stillsby, because he was just a total douche nozzle and corrupt yeah. as fuck. And yeah, because like, we had an option, right? We could side with Ziggs, the human dude, mm-hmm. and we could like get rid of the lord of Stillsby, which automatically put us on his side. But we also yeah. could have been Shavad Dawes' friends. Yeah, so... Like, he, that was an option, right? Yeah, he got two different letters one night when you were sleeping. One was from Zix, yeah. asking to join the rebe- rebellion and get the king of Silsby out of the throne. The other was from... I'm not, I can't remember if it was from Shavada or if it was from the king of Silsby. I kind of think it was from Shavada. Shavada. He told us he wanted to kill that annoying human dude. Yeah. Who was Zix, so... Yeah. But yeah, when it comes up, I just think of like Skyrim, and it's like uh, or not. I don't know. I've never actually really played Skyrim, but that's what I think of when I think of this. But it's like those option, like those games where you can pick an option. They're like, who do you want to side with? And then like, you scroll over with the cursor to the left or the right. Yeah, I personally, I think it would have been cool to side with Shavada, mm-hmm. but I feel like it would have set a precedent for us to be like not good characters in the end. I mean, like. It- it definitely would be something that would make it seem like you guys aren't as good, but there could have been some really interesting things happening because of that. And you'd have been able to, like, do anything in any city you were in. Really? Pretty much. God fucking Because <laughs> you have Shravada, one of the most powerful and, well, the most rich person and... One of the most powerful in terms of politics. Politics and, like, influence. One of the most yeah. influential. Yeah, on at least people. the western side, or eastern side of the continent. Yeah. We should have... Why did we sign with Ziggs? Yeah, Ziggs is, is the good guy. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I want to play a bad guy. <laughs> uh, no, it worked out, though. Because I don't think... At that point, I don't think any of us would have done it, even for Shavada. Who was nice to us. Like, he never really went out of his way to be bad or like, Not really, cruel no. to us. I mean, it made no sense for Ryan to be on his side. Actually, no, it would have made sense. Oh, no, eventually he would have found out about the kids in the black yeah. market. But at the time, he didn't know. So I think he was actually more tempted. I think Ryan was more tempted to be Shabba Da's friend just because yeah. of his positive interaction with them. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as it was associated with the Lord of Stillsby, we we're like, no, like yeah. we, <laughs> it's not even in character. Like we had, a, we had our own personal grudge against <laughs> that guy. Like we did not like that mm-hmm. fucking guy. Was the Lord always supposed to be a dick or was yeah. it just comedic timing? No, he was always supposed to be a douche. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. yeah perfect then. Because like there was always supposed to be a rebellion and there needed to be a reason for that rebellion. Yeah. And like the main reasons were like not him not caring about the populace or the poor or well the big thing was the poor of Silsby, and turned into a hobo army. Yeah, and him just being pretty much for money and for power. Yeah, it's funny. You know, what's funny is when I said he said like how big is their army talking about the Shardana, and I replied nah, bigger than yours. Yeah. that wasn't even supposed to be an insult. Yeah, like, <laughs> that was just me being like, yeah, they're a fucking huge yeah. army. But then Ed, Tony went like, oh. <laughs> I was like, okay, there it is. Yeah, it's on. It's on. Fucking turn on the fucking fire hydrants. <laughs> that made what the fuck was that I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I, it wasn't even supposed to be like that. But then he took it the wrong way, and then yeah. Blaze was doing that piece of shit. And then Ryan added on to it, and yeah. someone else might have added on. I feel like that was uh, Zach. Zach, yeah. Zach threw something in there. Yeah, I don't know. It, 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 we were we were all mad leaving that room. Yeah. Stupid guy. Yeah. We got, we got, we won in the end. Yeah, yeah, uh, like because of that, you guys ended up killing Travada. You kidnapped the cane, allowed Zix Crazier to gain the throne. That was fun. Tony and I oh, went yeah. off together yeah. to <laughs> kidnap a king. It was the most, that was such a stooge, like two stooge, two stooges, yeah. just us alone in a castle, continuously rolling horrible on yeah. attackers <laughs> and like stealth rolls. And like, it was a goddamn mess. Yeah. But you guys were lucky because, like, there was so much shit going down in town because of the revolution that they didn't really pay much attention to you. Yeah, didn't they literally walk over us? Pretty much, yeah. 
That's fine. We got the, we we won in the end. Okay, we kidnapped that game. Yeah. I think that's when I finally used one of my smoke pellets, which I still have. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. We, I panicked. Our stealth check sucked, so yeah. I threw down the smoke pellet because I knew we weren't going to be able to fight those guys. So that gave us an advantage. I don't think we even fought them. We just snuck. No, in. you fought the two guards at his door, but you guys kept on missing, especially when after you threw the smoke pellet. Yeah, it gave us all this advantage. Yeah, yeah. and I think did we beat them or did we just? Skip you didn't out? beat them. Yeah. We. Oh yeah. yeah we, we used strength checks to knock them out because yeah. we didn't want to kill them. And then we kidnapped the king. By the way, what happened to his daughter? Him and Cochran, or her and Cochran, still a thing? Uh, no, I don't think so. There'd be no point, right? Like, yeah, there'd be no point. Unless they or, fell magically in love. I think I said that, he, I think you guys had asked the king of Avranches that, and he said at that time it wasn't going to happen, but in the future it could happen, depending on how everything went with the Shardana. So yeah. basically everything would be put on the... Uh, put in the back until that happened. It's on the back burner. It's, yeah. it's simmering right yeah. now. <laughs> We're waiting for that pasta sauce to be just right, and yeah. then we'll fucking dive in. Uh, and then also while you were in Stillsby, you found out that your old friend Beast Snack was in town, so you ended up talking with them, befriended him, and after the revolution, he ended up taking you to where he knew the depths was. Yeah, yeah, good old bee snack with his. Yeah. Changing hair color and. Yeah, so like bee snack is deaf. I yeah. mean, uh, mute. he's a mute, so he can't really speak, but he shows his emotions through the different colors of his hair and then just like writes on walls through illusions on what he wants to do and stuff like that. Yeah. That was a cool character. Yeah. I like bee snack. I was kind of sad when he left. Well, he, he could always come back if you guys go back to Stillsby or True. anything like that. We can talk to him again. I don't know. He's like one of the only people Blaze is friends with. Yeah. I Actually, the, I'd be Blaze's only friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blaze doesn't have a lot of people he talks yeah. to, so. And also, B-Snack also knew Fazmir, who you've recently met. Right. Oh my they god, yeah. they together for a little bit. Yeah, Blaze made no connection to that. Yeah. I don't think about it. Yeah. It's too late now. I'm not going to go, like, next time I see him, it's going to be like, oh, hey, where are you yeah. going? Be snack. Maybe it'll come up. Well, but. I mean, you barely talked to Fasmir at all. Well, the moment we got there, like, I just disregarded him. Yeah. I was like, I don't know who this guy is. We have other shit to handle, as in my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, guys, we have to take care of me. Yeah. All right, Blaze has stuff to do, which is the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> Playing a selfish character is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love just being a dick. Uh, yeah, so B-Snack was taking you to the depths. You're about uh, half days away, and then you uh, rested for the night. And that night, Farron disappeared. And he ended up waking up in, like near the depths in a like grove where all the trees are black and as if by flame. And there were a lot of... There's a lot of uh, ash in that place, which... In his experience, that meant that he actually killed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so after that, he went back to where you guys were at and didn't tell you guys about anything that happened. Him and that's when him and uh, Ryan Ryan made friends. Yeah, and talked about their backstories a bit. Yeah, but that whole relationship is in a weird dilemma right now where it feels like Ryan is fanboying a little too much. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's not what Duncan's going for, but it made me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no, it's cool. I like that they're building a relationship. Yeah. I don't know. Blaze is struggling. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't know who to make friends with. Yeah. Or how to do it. Especially since he's been an abyssal wretch. Yeah, he has no cause... one he's never been dependent on people before. Yeah. Like he can't really be on his own anymore. Yeah. And he's like doesn't know what to do. So he's trying not to piss everyone off, but it's Blaze in the end. Like yeah. he just naturally annoys people because he's a dick and d- doesn't think of other people. Yeah. So, I don't know. I've had some ideas about multi-classing for him mm-hmm. to make him more, like, supportive yeah. cast, which might help. Like, you've been thinking of becoming partly a an artificer. I was thinking artificer, or uh, I don't want to do any kind of spell casting, like, no religion yeah. stuff, because that doesn't fit him at all. He's, yeah. like, logi- he's a logician, basically. I don't think he believes in most of that stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean... It's D and D. You have to like they're so yeah. apparently real, but like it's not something he focuses on. So I was thinking probably either an artificer 
or uh, another support class. So bard, but like then it's like kind of hard to implement yeah. magic all of a sudden, right? It's not yeah. something you can just do. So I, artificer was the most logical one for mm-hmm. me. I don't know. I've been thinking about it. We'll see if it's like next level up or the ne- level up after. I don't know. Because yeah. I, I tried to I tried to implement it a little bit when we were traveling to Ite. Yeah. Talking about how I wanted to tinker with some stuff. Mm-hmm. I forgot that uh, next time we're in Ite, I, I was supposed to I was supposed to buy in our. Uh, a tinker's kit. I oh, yeah. I yeah. wanted to buy one because I have money for it. I wanted yeah. to buy that and a couple of other things, but it slipped my mind. You said wizard and I was, I was out. I was yeah. like, Wonder- we're going. Yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, we made it to the depths. Finally. Yeah, you went to the depths and then you heard like a screaming coming from one of the chambers nearby. Mm-hmm. And you found a young dragonborn kid in that chamber. And it ended up being a dragon mortar who was possessed by some kind of demon. The, the moment you said there was a kid standing yeah. there crying, I was like, this is every video game or horror game oh, yeah. ever. Yeah. We're not going near that kid. And, and we did. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ryan had to, like, true, due to his backstory and yeah, how yeah. he functions, he has to. It worked out. Yeah. It was a weird, intense moment yeah. thrown in there. It was like, so sudden, like, none of us were really expecting it to be so intense because, like, Ryan got visibly upset. Yeah. Blaze had to, like, stop <laughs> Arondel from murdering a child, <laughs> which really fucked with Blaze for a minute there. He was like, yo, we just about slayed a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention this kid is possessed. Yeah, so, like, you guys fought him and and uh, knocked him out, him out, and that helped you actually get the demon out of him. Yeah. And... Uh, you ended up having B-Snack take him back to Stillsby, where he was from. Yeah, we killed two birds with one stone. Yeah. <laughs> Got rid of both those guys, because I don't think either of them needed to be there or wanted to be there. Yeah, yeah B-Snack def- definitely didn't want to be there. No, I don't blame him. That was my fault, though. I told him to come. <laughs> well, because you're one of his best friends, he did want to, like, have a friend to hang out with again. It worked out, though, because then we didn't have to, like, carry this kid around. Yeah. What was your plan for that? For, like, the, the kid. The kid, if there was no bee snack. Uh, probably just have one of you take him out and that, well, take him uh, out of the depths and then just, like, tell him where to go. But if you guys had just left him there, there could have been some really bad consequences in the future. So I'm glad he did what he did. What kind of consequences? Yeah, I guess I won't spoil anything, but, like, in the later depths, you guys would run into him, but he would be even more and more powerful each time. And he'd be more prone to anger and actually killing and stuff because he seemed to be abandoned again and again. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. It's like he levels up each time he gets fucking left behind. Yeah. That's so sick. I like that. Yeah. That's cool. Thanks. No, we fucked that kid up. <laughs> Every chance we got, we threw, we threw hands at that kid. <laughs> Stupid child. What are you doing, Wander Alone? That was the first time I got to use deflect missiles. I was very, oh, yeah. I was yeah. very excited. Yeah. I did something cool. I caught the arrow, snapped it in half. Yeah. Oh, monks are so good. I love monks. I've wanted to play one for so long. Yeah. I thought about doing the drunken monk. Yeah, first. that that does seem cool. Like, I'm not a huge fan of, fan of monks myself. Just because, I don't know, I just don't like using key. And I, I find that magic is better than key. I, I, I like That's it just my opinion. Though. I feel more strategic yeah. when I have to think of that. Like, in a fight, yeah. like, I'm always looking at my key and looking at my other stuff. It's like, can I do this and do this? So, I have to plan a few steps mm-hmm. ahead and, like, movement. I've been doing that a lot more. Uh, like, where I'm going to go, what my plan is. I'm taking, like, more precautions with movement and, like, uh, reactions and stuff. So, I think it's, with a fighter, it's like, you definitely want to put on a more strategic hat. Yeah, definitely. Fighting, as opposed to magic, where... You still want to, like, think about ahead, like, what spell you're going to use because you only have so many spell slots. Yeah. But the higher level you get, the less concerned you are because yeah. you're like, yeah, I have eight fucking first level spell yeah, slots exactly. and stuff. So, yeah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I like it. It, 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 it. It's different from what I'm used to. Yeah. I usually do ranged. Mm-hmm. I realize. Yeah, I don't yeah like the majority the, of it is ranged. Yeah, this is my first like close up dude, yeah. which is cool because I've always wanted to be like the the barbarian character. I'm yeah. like right in there throwing mm-hmm. hands, but 
I always end up being that dude who shoots bone. Yeah. <laughs> Too many Lord of the Rings movies when I was a kid. Legolas oh, is yeah. so cool. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to be Legolas. So after you ta- uh, saved that kid, you guys went through the other passageway in the depths. And you found out that it was like a demon slash devil town. And you guys snuck through some of the town and you found a disguised drow named Smoky Dark Sky. And he kind of took you to his place to help you rest up and then told you the best way to get out there to the other side and told you about a few of the darker things happening in town. So like there was some stuff, like there were a lot of people imprisoned in the prison there that, that are like humans and stuff and being tortured. You guys didn't have time for that though, and there was another thing similar to that, but can't remember at this at this point. It were so weird playing a totally neutral party. Yeah, <laughs> like I, good characters would have done that side quest, man. We would have been in there, would have been saving people. We're like, nah, I got one. We we're busy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like we're not evil, but like we don't go out of our way. Yeah, like, it's fun. I think it's more fun that way. Makes me feel less inclined. Mm-hmm. To do stuff, I can just pick and choose what I want. Yeah. So. Uh, so from there, you went through a few alcoves, underground lakes, and stuff like that. And then you found a really rocky alcove, and in this alcove, there were stalagmites and stalactites ever. And Im- impaled on one of the stalagmites was the dead body of a random person, as well as. As well as leftovers from like a fire pit. So this guy probably had ran away from the Shardana and made this fire, needed to rest, and then he got impaled. Unfortunate. And then you saw carved into one of the stalagmites. They are the Shardana. They were taken to a prison camp. Help. Uh, then after that, you guys traveled some more into the depths, and there were some dead ends. Some marriage counseling issues. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. That was so fucked up. <laughs> I-, I love that. That fucking had me in tears. That was tears. adorable, yeah. When Farron had to listen to yeah. them talk about their wife problems. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> and then we ran into those little magmen. Ma- oh, yeah. Uh, or were they magmen? What were they? No, they were magmen. They yeah. were magmen? Yeah. Like those little fire demon things? Yeah, uh, that was later on in the depths. So the next, oh, was it? I oh. think so. I think the next place we went to was the underground lake. Oh, okay, okay. And you guys saw it was a huge lake, and there was a rocky island in the very center with like a really shiny and glittering red rock jutting out from the center of it. Mm-hmm. And so Lazarus decided to jump in and try to swim to the island. But about halfway there, a bunch of Koatoa surfaced and Mm -hmm. started charging after him and attacking. Uh, So he eventually got to the island a bit harmed, I think. Found that there was also a couple skeletons on there. But being that the Koatoa was fast approaching, he decided to think he uses Missy Step action Mm -hmm. that he has as an Eldrin. You got him, like, partway there. Yeah, to get partway to the... Well, back to where the rest of you guys were at. Because we were trying to throw stuff at them as they came at him. Yeah. What an idiot. I can't believe you did that. (laughs) Was there anything on that island of value? The big rock was worth, like, thousands upon thousands. We wouldn't be able to carry that. No, you could have, like, gotten some chunks off of it, though. Yeah, okay. And, uh... There was stuff to do with the skeletons you found on the island, too. Well, we like, just there are some time. notes with them, as well as some weaponry. Okay. Nothing nothing major, though. You might have also found a golden pouch that's there. Or a okay. pouch of gold. Okay. Just didn't... Unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> that he went exactly. alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then he, uh, Lazarus swam to the other side of the lake to where you guys were at, and the Koatoa decided not to attack since there were outnumbered and like five or six of you there, and yeah. were uh, somewhat outnumbered but mostly outpowered. Yeah, got uh, lucky. Yeah, and I think that was basically where episode twenty left off. Mm-hmm. So yeah, because uh, 
it may have ended off like him being trapped on the island, actually. I can't remember. No, I, I think... If we did it like he was trapped on the island and then we ended it, or he made it back and then we ended I it. I think he made it back and we ended it there. Yeah, I can't quite remember. I remember that <laughs> it was Elendil all over again. Why are you oh, going yeah. across this yeah. water? Why are you doing this? This is silly. You know it's a trap. Oh, yeah. no, it's a trap, but I gotta go for a swim. <laughs> uh, so... I think that's where where we leave off for this recap. For the next recap, we'll talk about episode 20 to 40 of A Deal with Demons. And then from there, we'll talk about however far we go. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Good night.